actually registered online this morning and got right in. The Vigo County Health Department opened its second location to receive COVID vaccinations. That's, that's a necessity. So I said, okay, I mean, there's nobody else to fill this need. We got to step up and make it happen. And we have a heartwarming story about a local veteran recovering from a stroke who received a free new roof. It's all thanks to local donations. Also, a local university teaming up with Amazon on a new technology program. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for watching. I'm Mike Tang. And I'm Dana winkle Plack. As COVID-19 vaccinations continue, Indiana health officials lower the age of those who can register. Previously, it had only been available to those over uh, 70 years old, but now those 65 and up can receive it too. That expansion was announced today by the State Department of Health. According to the Health Department's website, over 562,000 Hoosiers have gotten the first dose of the vaccine, and over 143 thousand are fully vaccinated. Overall, health care workers, long-term care workers, and those 65 and older can be vaccinated. Well, on the same day that Hoosiers 65 and older were eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccination, the Vigo County Health Department opened a new, larger vaccination site. The Sherry McBroom was there on the very first day of Vigo County vaccinations in this new location and explains what it means moving forward. <laughs> As vaccinations started in Vigo County's new location, many Terre Haute residents I spoke with were eager to get their first dosage. On Monday, the Vigo County Health Department opened their new COVID-19 vaccination location at the old Sears store location at the Holt City Center. When the health department started vaccinations at the original vaccination center at the county annex, they were able to vaccinate 60 people per day and then 90 people per day. According to Vigo County Health Department spokesperson Ronnie Elder, this this new location allows them to vaccinate up to 250 people per day. Many found out early morning, mon early Monday morning, they were eligible to receive the vaccine and were registered for it. Opening up to more people, we know that we need to be able to vaccinate more people and have more appointment slots available because they were just going so fast. We want to be able, if you're eligible, we want you to be able to get an appointment. Elder says to this point, the Vigo County Health Department has vaccinated around 1,200 people. That number does not include vaccinations from today. Dana. All right. New space looks good. Thanks to Sherry. And well, Hoosiers who qualify for a vaccine can register at rshot.in.gov or by calling 211. That includes health care workers. And again, as of this morning, those age 65 and older. Vaccinations also continue in Illinois for essential workers and more. You can check out coronavirus.illinois.gov for how to register. There's vaccination information for both Illinois and Indiana on our website. Indiana is nearing a year under the COVID public health emergency that was issued by Governor Eric Holcomb, but some Republicans in the state legislature aren't letting up on attempts to rein in the authority he's used to imposing restrictions on businesses and crowds. Holcomb recently extended the state's health emergency and mask mandate until March. That, after a Republican lawmaker acted on a bill to limit those orders, and the lawmakers also questioned the effectiveness of face masks. Holcomb has defended his actions. Vincennes University and Amazon team up for a program they're calling a game changer. VU is the first university to work with Amazon in order to launch the Megatronics and Robotics Apprenticeship Program. It helps students obtain skills in automation and technology. It's done through a combination of classroom learning, hands-on instruction, and the and on-the-job training. Apprentices, apprentices live and learn on VU's Vincennes campus, and they study and train at the Indiana Center for Applied Technology. The Indiana Department of Environmental Management announced today that it has grants available for recycling and collecting and disposing of household hazardous waste. Counties, municipalities, solid waste management districts, schools, and even nonprofit organizations here in Indiana are eligible to submit an application for the Community Recycling Grant. The grants can range anywhere from $500 up to $100,000. For more information, you can go to our website. Again, that is mywabashvalley.com. A local veteran received a new roof today at no cost. It was thanks to a community collaboration. Zeke Torres was in Brazil to see the project come to life. He is here now to bring us this story. Zeke. Mike, according to Terry Bachelor's daughter, 
Julie, her father has been in need of a roof replacement for years. Last year when construction was set to start, Terry suffered a stroke. Today Terry is still recovering, but now it's under a new roof. Last fall, Christina Howard received a phone call from Terry Batchelor's family saying he needed a new roof. After visiting him on a rainy day, she knew she needed to help. I remember when we walked into the house, there were buckets all over the back side of the house with water pouring through the roof. And I mean, it was just such a, a really serious situation that it, it haunted me. And I said, okay, we got to figure out a way to do this. Through the Mary T. Clinker Veteran Resource Center, a nonprofit organization, Terry, who served in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, was eligible for help. It's awesome. That's all I can say about that. You know, it's, I, it's hard, hard to realize, you know, what they're doing for me. But. Originally, the goal was to raise $7,500 solely for materials. We were concerned about the family being up on the roof in the winter, so we started reaching out for someone to help and we were hoping donate the labor because there was just no way we were going to be able to raise enough to pay for the labor too. And uh, that's when we found Honest Abe and we were able to start moving forward with the project. However, last November, Terry suffered a stroke limiting his mobility. Now, months later, he still faces new challenges during recovery. Not being able to drive and just stuff like that. And it's Kind of rough doing that. Surrounded by family, Terry reflects on the support around him. Well, just awesome, really. <laughs> you know, that's just having everybody here, you know. His family tells me Terry has made significant progress in therapy and his new roof will be completed tomorrow. Dana. No, oh, that sounds great. So, thanks so much, Zeke. Well, we do have a street closing that may affect you tomorrow. South 19th Street in Terre Haute going to be closed from Crawford Street to Oak Street. The closure begins tomorrow at 8 a.m. The street's scheduled to reopen by 5 p.m. The closing there of 19th is so that a sewer line can be repaired. It's no fun to work outside in this kind of weather. Oh, it's cold. And yeah, it's, it's going to get colder, too, I guess, uh, in the long term. Jesse will have a forecast up next. And as we do go to break, here's a look at today's COVID-19 numbers. Local news that matters.